Hello, and welcome to The Bible with Briscoe. I am your host, slash narrator, Shenandoah Briscoe. And today we're going to be covering Joshua 10 through 12 and Luke 1, 39 through 56. Okay, Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and skill in reading in the, your word, which will be a blessing to you and to those who are listening. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. The sun stands still. Joshua 10 Now, Adon Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it. It doing and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai and its kings as he had done to Jericho and its king. And that the people of Gibbon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and had become their allies. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Gibbon was an important city like one of the royal cities. It was larger than Ai and all its men were good fighters. So Adian Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, P Purim, king of Jeremoth, Je Jephoth, king of Leshish, and Debar, king of Eglon. Come up and help me attack Gibbon, he said, because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jeremoth, Lesh, Leshen, and Eglon, joined forces. They moved up there with their, all their troops and took up positions against Gibbon and attacked it. The Gibbonites then sent out word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgad, Gilgal. Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, because all of the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After all, after an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defended, uh, defeated them completely at Gibbon. Israel pursued them along the road, going up to Beth Haran, and cut them down all the way to as Azekah and Mekadesh, Mekada. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Haran to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them, and the more of them died from the hail than were killed by the sword of the Israelites. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, over the valley of Allah, al -Jahan. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Geshar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to camp at Gilgal. Five Amorite Kings Killed Now, the five kings that fled from he fled and hid and had hidden in the caves at Mekadesh when Joshua was told 
that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave at Mekadesh, he said, Roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave, and post some men there to guard it, but do not stop. Oh, great. Now we've done it. Now I've done it. Hold on. Joshua and Eli defeated it completely, but a few survivors managed to... Okay, now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave at Mechahekada. And then when Joshua was told there that the five kings had been found hiding in Me the cave of Mechahekada, he said, roll large rocks on the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But don't stop, pursue your enemies. Attack them from the rear, and don't let them reach their cities, for the Lord your God has given them into your hand. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely, but a few survivors managed to reach their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp of Mechakekada, and no one uttered a word against the Israelites. Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave. The kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jeremoth, Lachish, and Eglon. When they had brought the kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army's commanders who had come with him, Come here and put your feet on the necks of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Then Joshua put the kings to death, exposed their bodies on five poles, and they were left hanging on the poles until evening. At sunset, Joshua gave the order, and they took them down from the poles and threw them into the cave where they had hidden. At the mouth of the cave they placed large rocks, which are there to this day. Southern cities conquered. This would be Joshua 10, 28. That day Joshua took Mechida. He put the city and its king to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it. He left no survivors, and he did not, and he did to the king of Mechida as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Mechida to Lebanon and attacked it. The Lord also gave that city and its king into Israel's hand. The city to, and everyone in it Joshua put to the sword. He left no survivors there, and he did to its kings as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and the Israelites with him moved from Lebanon, Lebanon to Lachish. He took up position against it and attacked it. The Lord gave Lecha into Israel's hands, and Joshua took it on the second day. The city and everyone in it he put to death to the sword, just as he had done to Lebanon. Meanwhile, Horam, king of Gazar, had come up to help Lechon, but Joshua defeated him and his army 
and two, no survivors were left, until no survivors were left. Then Joshua and all of Israel with him moved on from Elisha to Eglon. They took up positions against the, it and attacked it. They captured it and that same day and put it to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it, just as they had done to Leshish. Then Joshua and all Israel with him went from Eglon to Hebron and attacked it. They took the city and they put it to the sword, together with its king, the villages and everything in it. They left no survivors, just as at Eglon they totally destroyed it and everyone in it. Then Joshua and all Israel with him turned around and attacked De Debir. They took the city, its king, and its uh, villages, and put them to sword. Anyone in the city, they in everyone in it, they totally destroyed. They left no survivors. They did not Debir. They did to Debir as the king as. And its king, as they had done to Lebanon, and its king, and to Hebron. So Joshua subdued the whole region, including the hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, and the mouth, mountain slopes, together with all their kings. He left no survivors. He totally destroyed all who breathed just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Joshua subdued the, them from Kadesh, Bjorn, to Gaza, and from the whole region of Goshen to Gibeon. All these kings and their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign, because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Joshua 11 Northern Kings defeated When Je Jebion king of Hezra heard of the heard of this he sent word to Jebab king of Maiden to the kings of Shemaron and Aksha Akshafith and to the northern kings who were in the mountains in Arabah, south of Kinnereth, in the western foothills, and in Naphoth Don, Naphathor, on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and west, to the Amorites, Hittites, Pezrites, and Jebezuits in the hill country, and to the Hevites below, Hermon in the region of Mesetha. They came out with their all their troops, and a large number of horses and chariots, a huge army as numerous as the sand on the seashore. All these kings joined forces and made camp together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, because by this time tomorrow I will hand them all oh I will hand all of them slain over to Israel. You are to hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and his whole army camped against came against them suddenly at the waters of Merom, and attacked them. And the Lord gave them into the hands of Israel. They defeated them and pursued them all the way to the great Sidon, to Masifer Meum, and to the valley of Masveth on the east, until no survivors were left. Joshua did to them as the Lord had directed. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots. At that time, Joshua turned back and captured Hazar and put its king to the sword. 
Hezar had been the head of all these kingdoms. Everyone in it they put to the sword. They totally destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed, and he burned Hezar itself. Joshua took all these royal cities and their kings and put them to the sword. He totally destroyed them, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. Yet Israel did not burn any of the cities built on their mounds, except Hazar, mount, uh, which Joshua burned. The Israelites carried off the uh, for themselves all the plunder and livestock of the cities, but all the people they put to the sword until they completely destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed, as the Lord commanded his servants, Moses. So Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did it. He left nothing undone, all of the, that the Lord had commanded to Moses. So Joshua took this entire land, the hill country, all of Negev, to the whole region of Goshen, the western foothills, the Arabah, and the mountains of Israel with their foothills. From Mount Halak, which rises toward Sire, to Balgad, in the valley of Lebanon, below Mount Haram, Hermon. Below Mount Hermon. He captured all their kings and put them to death. Joshua waged war against all these kings for a long time, except for the Havites living in Gibbon. Not one city made a treaty of peace with the Israelites, who took them all in battle. For it was the Lord himself who hardened their hearts to wage war against Israel so that he might destroy them today uh, totally, ex exterminating them without mercy, as the Lord had commanded Moses. At that time, Joshua went and destroyed the Anakites from the hill country, from Hebron, Dabir, and Anab, from all the hill country of Judah and from all the hill country of Israel. Joshua totally destroyed them and their towns. No Anakites were left in Israel territory, Israelite territory. Only in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod did any survive. So Joshua took the entire land just as the Lord had directed Moses, and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the land had rest from war. List of kings, list of defeated kings. Joshua 12. These are the kings of the land whom the Israelites had defeated and whose territory they took over east of the Jordan from the Aaron, George, from the Aaron Gorge to Mount Hermon, Hermon, including all the eastern side of the Arabah, Shahan, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. He ruled for Aaron on the rim of the Aaron Gorge, from the middle of the gorge to the Jacobuk River, which is the border of the Amor Ammonites. This included half of Galilee. He also ruled over the East Arab uh, Araba from the Sea of Galilee to the Sea of Araba, that is the Dead Sea, to Beth Jeshmoth, and then southward below the slopes of Pesag and the territory of Og king of Bashan, on one of the last of the Raphites, who reigned at, in at Ashtroth, and Edri. I'm going to sneeze, and I don't want to. Okay. 
he ruled over Mount Hermon, Shekelah, Al of the Beshin, to the border of the people of Geshur, and Mekar, Mekahach, and half of Galilee, to the border of Shion, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites conquered them, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land to the Reubenites, the Gadagites, and half-tribe of Mesha to be their possession. Here is a list of the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites, I wish that straw would stay out of the way. It's getting right in that microphone and keeps making noises. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Sorry, Lebanon to the Mount Hockey, where rest towards. Okay, here's a list of the kings of the land that Joshua the, and the Israelites conquered on the west side of the Jordan from Malagad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which rises towards Seir, Seir. Joshua gave their lands as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel, according to their tribal divisions. The lands included the hill country, the western foothills, the Araba, the mountain slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev. These were the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Pezzerites, Havites and Jezebites, there, these were the kings. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, near Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jermoth, one. The king of Leshes, one. The king of Eglon, one. The king of Gezer, one. The king of Debir, one. One, the king of Geder, one, the king of Horma, Horma, one, the king of Arad, one, the king of Libna, one, the king of Adonam, one, the king of Mekathida, one, the king of Bethel, one, the king of Tupla, one, the king of Hephra, one, the king of Aphek, one, the king of Leshron, one, the king of Madon, one, the king of Hazar, one, the king of Sharman, one, Shar Sharan Maran, sorry, the king of Sharan Maran, one, the king of Akashef, one, the king of Tenech, one, the king of Megiddo, one, the king of Kadesh, one, the king of Jenemy in Carmel, one. The king of Dor in Nethodor, one. The king of Gaiomi in Galgal, Gilgal, one. The king of Tazara, one. Thirty-one kings in all. That concludes Joshua, ten through twelve, and now we will be moving into Luke. One thirty nine through fifty six. At that time, Mary got ready. Oh, Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready to ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears? The baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. Mary's Song And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, 
and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, as uh, for he has been mindful and the of the humble state of his servant. For now all for now on all generations will call me blessed, for a mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has fulfilled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has been helpful. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. And that concludes uh, Luke 1 39 through 56. I believe that concludes Luke. All right, that concludes the Bible with Frisco for today. Tomorrow, nope, I guess it doesn't conclude Luke 1. Luke 1 will go on. Let's see, tomorrow, Joshua 13 through 15, and Luke 1, 57 through 80. So, those will be covered tomorrow. Father, I just thank you that this was a blessing to you, and that your word is a blessing to each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe, and as always, you know, God loves you, and so, so do I. And so come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, I'll be here, and I hope that you are too.